Okay, YouTube, let's look at the Magdalene laundries in Ireland. This was a subject that was of high importance maybe in uh, the early 90s, late 90s, early 2000s in Ireland, and it was considered this huge scandal and an affront against women. Um, and I'm sure um, Wikipedia will reflect that in this article. So the Magdalene Laundries in Ireland, also known as the Magdalene Asylums, were institutions of confinement, usually run by Roman Catholic orders, which operated from 18th to the late 20th centuries. They were run ostensibly to house fallen women, in quotation marks, an estimated 30,000 of whom were confined in these institutions in Ireland. Um, in 1993, okay, so we have um, this allegation, which could, could be correct, of a mass grave containing 150 corpses uncovered in convent grounds near one of the laun laundries. And what these corpses um, consisted of, I believe, were like babies, unwanted babies, who um wind up wound up in like what do you call this like a reservoir tank um cistern sort of tank so um now you you have people up in arms about this in the irish community going oh look at this, this is another sort of fault of the catholic church and it could well be in in one sense but on a wider social level the Catholic Church in Ireland didn't operate in a vacuum and the Catholic Church is, as I see it anyway, doesn't always follow the uh, precepts of the Bible or of Christ's teaching. And there seems to be you know, this idea of Catholic tradition and what it seems to do is go along with what people want as much as what they're telling people that they should do. Uh, a good example of this is divorce, where in um, in the Bible, Christ says that it is permitted to divorce someone if they've been unfaithful, that the, the marriage contract in that circumstance can be voided. So that's just an example, whereas like in, in Catholicism, traditionally, um, there's no divorce is just not allowed. And I'm not sure if that really came from the priests and the clergy and and that. I think it might have come from the people. So not top down, but rather bottom up. The people really just didn't want this um, get out clause in the marriage con contract. They wanted it to be more binding so that society remained more cohesive um, and ultimately less free. And similarly, back in the day, these institutions, in a sense, operated as like corrective facilities, you know, as a punishment for women who maybe stepped out of line, you know, that they, they stepped over certain social lines. And when, when men do that, men are generally, um, they don't own the keys to reproductive rights. And men are kind of more proactive. They're more, also more aggressive um more prone towards violence i mean and violent acts um and they're more active in general dynamic in that sense so where whereas women traditionally would have stayed at home looked after children maybe done knitting men would have been out working with their hands and doing things and also consequently they'd be out creating mischief you know, on a number of different levels like so you know ex extreme ones would be terrorism war uh, violence um violent acts murders muggings uh rapes ki you know all of these things so that would be traditionally the the sort of remit criminal remit of the male and we have corrective facilities for those people and they're called prisons and they still operate today. So in our society, if you break the social contract, 
you your rights are diminished and you get sentenced to jail and you have certain freedoms taken away from you the freedom of movement for example and the freedom of association you you're limited to a small number of hours that you can meet with the people that you want to meet with during visiting times now similar thing in the past women had their social contract with the state which was to because their responsibilities in society were to do with reproduction and that is the function they serve in society and that is the function that um is ultimately their responsibility um except in certain circumstances but or maybe not even actually what i mean by that is so they um had a responsibility to possibly dr- dress modestly behave in a ladylike fashion um not put themselves in harm's way by um you know dressing provocatively or going to places of ill repute or putting themselves in danger like walking down dark alleyways at night or around fishing boats or down by the docks or what have you now modern day feminists would say um don't uh, don't tell me what to wear teach the men not to rape or whatever and that's all well and good if you're um like well that argument's been gone over before and totally debunked so i'm not going to get into it here and uh i'm sure you can find plenty of information on that all over the place but um on the issue at hand if women do have that held or had that responsibility in the past and it's a quite a big responsibility that they had to behave in a way that was comport themselves in a way that was beneficial to society essentially in the same way that men had to as well they weren't allowed to just take things that weren't theirs they weren't allowed to just kill people who they felt um were getting in their way or in their way of power or the next their next meal even or whatever you know there were certain uh, rules and codes of honor that had to be observed and ultimately it has to do with reining in your desires and becoming a strong person who is capable of taking responsibility for their actions and and the act- and the consequences of those actions in the future and ultimately what we've arrived at in in today in modern ireland and in most of western civilization is a situation where women have thrown off all of the social requirements that had formerly been placed upon them and there is no longer any how do you say um repercussions for them so you know what what we've seen in Ireland is they took away the Magdalene asylums for women who uh loose women let's say who who went out and got pregnant before getting married and uh yes so imagine if the same thing happened where we just said oh you know what prison is uh inhumane it's unfair treatment the men don't deserve it um they should be able to go out and do whatever they want um who's to stop them so then we just take away the prisons away all the prisons away we took away the magdalene laundries uh, and and the accountability for women let's take away the prisons you don't hear a feminist saying that no of course not i mean in fact they're kind of saying the opposite because it is true that women can commit crimes and go to prison um which would be separate it's, it's like a separate system um, women's prison but it's al- also would be a separate system to a lag- magdalen laundry in Ireland which was a uh, to do with overstepping certain social boundaries so um but even now like fem- feminists will be looking to say let's not just reduce um prison sentences for women and they are um in any case women will get lesser sentences for the crime same crime a man does so and now well you've probably heard in the past the fem- feminists were talking about getting rid of prison completely for women like no prison at all so the interesting thing is that in today in modern irish society now 2018 just recently passed the uh, abortion referendum which was uh again another that you know just striking away even more accountability 
for women's actions. So we're in a situation now where a woman doesn't even have to be res held accountable for the life created, not just the potential for one created. So if we're talking about murdered babies, oh God, 150 corpses in a mass grave. 150, like, that's going to be a drop of the ocean compared to what feminists will bring us now. Hundreds of thousands of dead babies. So... Yes, and I'm not even sure if that, um... If that referendum was legitimate like that it wasn't rigged in any sense there's a video let me just look it up here okay yeah so there's a video of um, the Irish referendum count which I believe was for the Lisbon Treaty um, I was supposed to be supervised or something. So the video shows a man removing a ballot box from where they were supposed to be under supervision, secure storage. So this is during the Irish referendum, whatever that is. And it seems to be from Infowars Ireland. I didn't even know they existed. They were from all of the can centers arriving at the town hall unaccompanied. At this point here, we see a man. This man came running out of the building. So you see he has a box with him. And was the box full, is it empty? Why doesn't this guy chase after him? Yeah, it looks looks weighty enough, doesn't it? So it's I think it's fairly safe to say that in Ireland you you could have a situation where there was vote rigging and ballot box stuffing and all the rest of it. I have to say the no campaign did a, a absolutely phenomenal job. But it might have been too little too late. I mean I remember in the early nineties there was um, a referendum on the X case. It was 93 as well, actually, which is uh, interesting because that was around the same time that this mass grave was found. And basically, at the time, people were like, yeah, look, abortion is wrong, um, except in like certain X cases, like maybe um, a rape or, or incest or something like that. Or, or maybe it was, sorry, it might have been to do with when a medical situation when the wo woman's life is under threat. And that was all written into the um, Eighth Amendment. And um, it was fine in that sense. Um, now there's this um, web, a blog essentially called Fitzpatrick Informer exposing the, exposing the Judeo-Masonic conspiracy. Another big rig in Ireland big rig in Ireland. Uh, so this is an example of the kind of no campaign posters. You can see that they are, this is just one image, but I have to say the standard was top notch. And they also did a very funny thing, and I, I believe they did this, I, I have no absolute confirmation of it. And it's it's done by the Iona Institute, you can see there in the corner possibly. But um, So what they do is they'd run an ad like this, and then Every couple of weeks, they'd switch it with like, um, you know, like meat is murder. Don't take um, a cow's calf away from her mother kind of thing. So they, they're they very clever in that they knew their target audience, which is this um, liberal left who is very pro-animal rights, um, especially on the ex extreme left. You'll have uh, like vegetarians, obviously, but more you know more extreme than vegans 
and uh, you, you know they won't eat chicken eggs because they think it's cruel they won't drink milk because that's cruel so they'd have an ad saying don't take the milk of the mother it's for the baby you know that kind of extreme nonsense and then the, and you know big bright color images and all the rest of it but um and then they'd they'd switch it out the next week with um don't you know talking about how one in five babies in in the uk is is aborted and stuff so the point was to create this sort of collision um in the mind of our phil philosophical dichotomy between on the one hand your love and respect for animals you know down to the point of not even taking their milk and on the other hand your total lack of care for uh, unborn babies up to the age of six months uh which is criminal so yeah so and now so i'm not sure if i'll get into the details of this uh, this article fully because um because I, i'm not entirely sure of the veracity of the uh points being made here you have um some references in the article one of which actually links to the video i just showed you of vote rigging in cork uh, during that referendum um but at some of them i can't even open up um like they don't they, they aren't extant extent on the internet so yeah i mean the exit polls w seem to be in favor of a yes and they c and the ultimate results came out much the same way so one has to assume that after 20 years of essentially totalitarian shutdown on the subject of abortion as in it was socially unacceptable to voice your opposition to abortion in most circles um in ireland within the last 20 15 10 15 years and um or more um unless you were a mother um a young mother or um you know a, a single mother which is I, I don't know why that is but that's just because there's a an awful lot more single mothers around than there used to be now am i saying that they should be put in the magdalene laundries um no not really uh i'm just saying that um i find it interesting that women bit are like essentially bitching about oh, what oppression or um what do you call it discrimination when they are absolutely the least discriminated demographic or one of 